So I'm very excited to introduce you to one of my millionaire students. He actually made six figures trading penny stocks, now seven figures on NFTs. This video is going to surprise you. I want you to get ready to take notes because it's all about the mistakes that too many traders make. So in this video, you're gonna meet Adam. Um, he's actually a very interesting guy, as you'll learn, but he now has a lot of experience by making millions, by also losing some too, and he's had a lot of up and downs. Fortunately, he's learned from his mistakes and he's gotten very uh, wise and conservative, and he actually uh, manages my NFT club. He's given some great alerts lately, some alerts that have gone up too five, 10 times in a few hours, it's crazy. If you click the link below, you can check out our NFT club. Um, not just alerts, but also watch lists, video lessons, webinars. He's got a five hour guide, which I highly encourage you to watch. Um, he knows so much about NFTs. I personally am learning from him and I can't encourage you enough to join my NFT club so much that if you wanna to come to my upcoming live trading conference later in 2022, you have to join the NFT club first. That is how passionate I am about helping you see the potential of NFTs. Not just to hodl, not to invest in like long-term investments, which they're not, but to take advantage of the niche's volatility. Um, and the interesting thing is the similar kinds of strategies, the same similar kinds of uh, techniques and mistakes apply to both niches. So in this video, I asked Adam to talk about some of the mistakes that he sees because now he's been teaching for quite a while. He's also experienced a lot of lessons himself. Um, so click the link below, check out the NFT club and get ready to take notes because Adam has some good lessons for you. Hey, my name is Adam Jarrett. I've been a trader since about 2016. I joined Tim Sites Challenge in 2020. And in this video, I wanna talk about five mistakes that traders make. So number one is not doing research and blindly following people's alerts. So what I see is frequently common, especially in the NFT space, I mean, it's so frequent in microcaps, penny stocks too, is that there's large accounts, usually anonymous people, that are the loudest ones in the room. They get all the following and they have all these newbie traders that don't wanna spend the time doing their research, just throw their money into positions. But they don't see where these influencers or these accounts have their state position in the stock or the NFT, whatever it is, they don't know when they buy, they don't know when they sell. So by not doing their research, they're just blindly going into it and it's not trading, it's gambling. And that's how you really get yourself into a tough position because when you do that, then you're tying up the capital, maybe you have a limited amount, you went all in on the position, whatever it is, it could literally go to zero. Uh, so many things, so many variables can happen that can just make it tank or go completely against you. So you always have to do your research because uh, trading is always about probability. So you have to have the odds in your favor. If you just blindly go into it, it's gambling and that is not trading and that's not how you win long term. Number two is using too much size and getting spooked out of positions, especially early on. So I had this mistake almost on repeat over and over. I would want to get into positions and I wanted to have a bid win that day. It feels great to have a bid win. Like when you're right in the market, it's, it's like a dopamine hit. You get a reward out of it. And so to get a large capital return on that, it just, it feels great, but that's emotional trading. And so, when you get into a position and you use too much size, you can get spooked out of it because, again, it's all about probability. And if you go into something with the expectation of, oh, I think that I'm right or I know that I'm right on this position and you really size up on it, well, anything can happen at any moment. So that could go slightly against your position and scare you out of it. You may be right on that position in 20 minutes, an hour, the next morning, whatever it is, but you were not able to hold in that position because emotion kicked in because you sized into but you got fearful you panicked out of your position maybe you short you got squeezed on it you held too long whatever it may be you did not uh, set your risk right and thus you get spooked out of your position a third common mistake that i would say is being hopeful so a lot of the times when you take a position if it goes against you if you don't have a stop loss or a mental stop loss set then that position, maybe it goes past a couple cents or whatever it is, and you just want to be hopeful. You're like, oh, I think I'll be able to bounce back. It's going to dip. I'll be able to sell on the bounce. What if that doesn't come? Well, you're just hopeful and it's going down, down, down. And there's so many people that are in that same position with you that maybe they've been trading longer or they just they stuck with their risk level that they just cut their position and just keep sending hit, hit, and hit. And just like Luna or so many of these OTC stocks, uh, cryptos that we see, 
if you do not set your risk right, then you can really get screwed in that position because you're hoping that, oh, it's going to bounce back to where I got in, or I'm still could make a profit, or blah, blah, blah. You make up all these ideas in your head instead of trading a plan and actually going into it with the right mindset and not being hopeful and just believing that you're right and not accepting that you could be wrong at any time. So the number four common mistake that I see traders make in the market, and I made this many times myself, is being emotional and being fearful. Uh, fear manifests itself in many ways in the market, whether it's uh, fear of missing out, fear of not making money, fear of having a profit and losing that profit. It can really cause you to make mistakes. So if you don't go into it with a plan and you come into it with emotion, or maybe you didn't come into it with emotion, but emotion kicks in because you didn't take action when you felt like you should have, or you didn't trade your plan accordingly, Fear can really come in and it can cause you to make a lot of mistakes and lose a lot of money. And that can really tie up your mental space because if you have fear coming in and you're buying something at the top because it's just gone parabolic and everybody's rushing in market buying it, then you can really set yourself up for failure because you can just do that over and over and over again and you can really just gut yourself and you can feel disgusted with the decisions that you made feel disgusted with the market and you may want to give up, but that's why you have to really be analytical in what you're doing. Number five, I would say is not doing mental analysis. So not many people talk about this. Um, we most commonly know fundamental or technical analysis, but this is something I personally struggled with is doing mental analysis. And what that means is checking myself, making sure that I have clarity or the headspace to actually take on a position and wait out the timing for that position. Because if I have something that happened early in the morning or family problems or bills or, I mean, life just happens. And if it happens at a time when you're trying to place a trade, that can really screw up your plan, that can really screw up your timing, can really screw up your position and cause you to lose a lot of money because if it's YZ, whatever is calling your attention over here, or over here, and you're trying to be in the zone of trading, it's just not going to work because you have to check yourself because you need to be in the zone when trading because if you're not, if you don't have a plan, you're not doing full analysis of, again, the fundamental why it's up for the day, does it have a catalyst, the technical analysis, the uh, supply and demand levels. If you're also not doing mental analysis, you're really going to put yourself into a position where you're going to start trading with emotion because your mind is elsewhere. You need to be in the zone when you're trading. I told you he was gonna give you some good lessons, right? I mean, that is amazing. And I know that people just want picks all the time. He's got the picks. Remember, if you click the link below, you can join the NFT club and get his NFT picks. He's been on fire. But it's also important to know about the psychology of trading. Picks don't matter if you don't have a plan, if you don't have discipline. So I hope this video has been helpful. Watch my other videos. You have a ton of free videos on this channel. Watch every single one. You have no excuse not to. Study up, study harder.